happen. Maybe not so much the all-stars of these two teams, but as you say, sevens is also a game that requires a lot of continuity, a lot of team interplay. And as you mentioned, with fitness being so important here and it being such for having those guys that are able to get out there and have that good team and work ethic, it can make a lot of difference. So what do you think this weekend? Are we going to see a lot of these sort of uh, contrast in styles, maybe teams that rely more on a couple of athletes going up against a bowling green uh, where it's more about the team ethic here where they're not looking at standout all-stars, but grinding out those wins just with a good team cohesion. Yeah, effort. you know, you, you, if, if you have a team that doesn't have a great team ethic, uh, even if they have an excellent player, uh, people will key on that player. This is this is a, a group of teams that have won tournaments. They know what they're doing. They'll key on the, the top player, and they'll make the other ones beat them. But uh, we'll, we'll end up seeing, I think, the team ethic win out over individuality but then of course what you'll also see is the combination and the combination is what's going to get you you into the cup quarterfinals well bowling green and texas a&m underway here texas knocking the ball on there not able to take that restart cleanly so we're going to have a scrum down here to bowling green Let's see what they can make of it off this first phase ball Well, the guy you want to look at uh, for Texas A&M is standing there at fly half. He's Connor Mills, and he he's their he's their point scoring guy. He's their captain. He's their uh, all American, and uh, he is an outstanding player. He is. We, we talk about individuality. He's the best player. He's the he's the guy who's got to make it happen. Uh, which uh, you start to think about the mental attitude there. Uh, if he starts to feel like he has to all the time, make a mistake, drop a ball, things like that, then they could be. A, a, then they're in trouble because they start to worry about that. Well, we had a powerful scrum there from Texas A&M, but a, but a penalty there, maybe some shenanigans going on in the front row. Uh, short arm here to Bowling Green, who are sizing things up, taking their time to set up, hoping that measuring twice and cutting once pays off here. A little bit of a set move. Oh, nice, nice run up here in the middle. Opened up that Texas A&M defense. And a nice, powerful run there to follow up. Good continuity. That's back in. Beautifully done. Uh, nice hard work. We, we do have a final on uh, on field two. And uh, Cal Poly has defeated Air Force 19-12. Maybe look, I, I saw the Air Force guys walking away from that field. And they were, uh, they had a bit of a dejected look about them. Air Force, uh, Really like their chances. Cal Poly is an interesting team because they keep making finals. And they just don't win them, and it's, it's driving them nuts. But, but that makes it for the record. Here it is. America. Maybe they're saving it for uh, for the right moment, and maybe uh, today would be or tomorrow would be the right moment. They are a very good team, but they they haven't won a final yet. That was a big game for them, and Cal Poly actually was the team that. Uh, um, Tied Life University last year. Bit of a surprise there. So they are uh, a, a team that might slip in under the radar there. Uh, and, and in fact, still going on now, we've got San Diego State against Lindenwood uh, on field two. San Diego State Aztecs, a very good team. They actually won their qualifier, but they're leading seven to five. Lindenwood University, part of the the growth of non-name universities that are going varsity, Lindenwood, Davenport up in Michigan, Lindenwood's in Missouri, Wheeling Jesuit out there in West Virginia, um, and Life University, all varsity or almost varsity teams that have, uh, have, have sprung up in recent years. Notre Dame College is another one. And, and basically it comes down to the fact that these are universities that can't afford a football team or choose not to afford a football team, but want to recruit, and you can recruit high school athletes by offering a really good, serious rugby team, and uh, they're starting to discover that. Well, let's see here, Texas A&M, Bowling Green about to get back underway. We have a score line of 21 to Texas A&M to get seven for Bowling Green, and what we've seen here is some good work coming from Bowling Green now, but certainly an individual effort so far from Bowling Green for their score, but Texas A&M, great team cohesion so far. But Bowling Green maybe hoping to have a have, have a bit of a difference here in this second half to where they can really put Texas A&M under pressure. Well, they've done well so far to retain that ball. Matt Marquette, he's getting out there right now. I think he's a second-half sub. They're going to need 
need him to do something. On, and uh, number 11, uh, Matt Theodore. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Mitch Zora. Well, we had some nice link play there from Bowling Green, but unfortunately, Texas A&M turning them over, so taking what looked like a promising move um, and snuffing it right out. But Texas A&M unable to make much of it, knocking it over themselves. So now we're going to have a scrum to Bowling Green. And this might be a bit of danger for uh, for Texas A&M here. Bowling Green's able to, to take this and put in a score. This is a perfect scoring opportunity. He's got uh, the scrum right in the middle of the field, right under the post. So they can go left, they can go right. Probably they're going to set up to go right because you, you're putting the ball in uh, on the left side. So the, the opposing scrum half is on that side. So you can just come out, pop it behind you. But, she, but they could also use Maurer to go the other direction. We saw the power of Maurer earlier in that individual display, and certainly he is making them work for it now. He just refuses to go down. Yeah. Um, and it's so important in sevens, isn't it? Keeping those feet so that you can, uh, can exploit that. Bowling Green really, really fighting to get inside right now. Um, you can see how hard they're being made to work in the breakdown uh, by Texas A&M. These teams, they want to get this ball in. Mauer, really excellent move there. Number six coming back in off that wing for that inside move. Good defense from Texas so far, but you just wonder how much defending they have left in them. And now Bowling Green, nice tackle from Texas A&M. But Bowling Green taking that ball, and it looks like they haven't quite been able to put it in, but number 11 looks like he might be able to pull it off, but we got a little bit of white line fever. They could have stood to pass that Mitch Sora. Could have passed it before. And uh, it's getting just painfully slow. Oh, and Texas and and with a vital turnover there. Bowling Green. Oh, and my goodness, and it looks like Texas and is about to reverse this. Does he have the gas? It looks like number 13. Uh, Brian Gillen is not, not able to pull it off. Just not quite enough uh, speed there, but Texas A&M, they are looking dangerous here in what looked like a certain score for Bowling Green. Can Bowling Green recruit, regroup here um, and, and put a stop to Texas A&M and put another score in before this thing gets out of hand? Yeah, there's a long way to run for Guillen, but he's got it again. He's thinking maybe he's uh, taking a breather and he can do it again. But uh, that was uh, it all started from white line fever for Bowling Green. They had everything going for them and just needed to relax and pass it. They didn't do it, and now look at them. They're on defense. Certainly, Texas a has maybe looked to play a little more of the cool NFL 7 style with a, a move there. Looks like he's still inbounds, Texas a and and they are just stretching this sideline to sideline to sideline, trying to open up those gaps in the defense. Bowling Green with some ferocious counter-rookie. They look like they had it, but Texas a and able to regather. Playing that short side of the field, 13 is able to power over for a score. Uh, some, some nifty running and uh, a dipsy doodle backhanded pass from Connor Mills uh, almost set up Chris Fraser, but they re recycled fairly well. I think Mills ended up being the guy uh, taking it over. Um, yeah, you know, Bowling Green did get over on that ruck, but there was nobody with him. So, you, I mean, you can, you can drive through a ruck and we'll go over the ball, and the ball is now behind you, so technically you've won the ball. But if nobody else is with you or nobody else who's going to go pick up that ball, then the other team can come right back, and that's what they did. They just they just went over it and had the ball back. So it's, you, you can't do it with just one person. If you do it with one person, that person has to have that ball under him, and so he can secure that rock and, and, and stay there and say, I've got possession. But he didn't do that. He just went all the way over the ball and just left the ball behind him, and it's just basically free. Controlled aggression, that's the name of the yeah. game. you got to understand where the ball is. Unfortunately, not enough support there. Um, blowing over just a little bit too hard. So Texas A&M able to make something of what looked like a certain score for Bowling Green. Did a fantastic job to reverse that. Now with a nice high kickoff here. Got a hand on it. Very, very dirty for Bowling Green right now. Looks like a knock on from Bowling Green. So that Texas A&M scrum. This is not what Bowling Green needed right at this moment in time. Is it Alex, Texas A&M? Going to put them under some pressure again. Bowling Green, yeah. what do they need to do here? Well, they don't need scrubs because it takes a long time to put the scrubs on. They, they don't have any time. Uh, they need to score three times. Um, but I'm very impressed with A&M. Extremely impressed with A&M and how they fall. Uh, controlled the ball in open play. As I say that, of course, they turn it over. 
Well, certainly they've looked a well-drilled side here. Bowling Green trying to, kind of frantically, to get something in there. Just weren't able to control it. Another Texas a and scrum. And as you said, they've got to get three scores here. Minute and 16 seconds. Certainly in seven, scores can happen pretty quickly, but it's uh, you got to be feeling some pressure for Bowling Green right now. Well, they, they, you can score quickly, but uh, you know, if, if you keep dropping the ball, then there's a scrum set. If you let the ball go out of bounds, there's a line out. That eats up with the clock more than anything else. Texas A&M stretching that field as they've done all day. Oh, oh, and a fantastic break here. Very, very difficult to defend. Mauer does a really nice job there of getting back and making that tackle, holding the ball up, making Texas A&M work for it. But Texas A&M, lots of options here. Defense, make it work hard. Put that score in. That's just tough to stop, isn't it, Alex? Well, it really is. That was Everett Dale, and he is a big boy. So if you're going to pick and jam, pick and jam with your biggest player. And he, he picked his spot. He took the second channel, hit the guy with a hip, and he was over. A really good defense from Dominic Maurer because uh, Matt Theodore looks like he was through. And, uh, and for the sweeper to deal with that kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one break and a to not only tackle him, but hold him up so his, his defense could come back online was a, a terrific play. But the thing is that uh, Bauer can't do it alone. And in the end, that ends the game. Uh, and, and, and I think we talked about individual versus teamwork. And that was a, that was a team effort from a and all the way through. I right? we said Connor Mills is a star. I, I, I wouldn't say Connor Mills had a star game. I think the number of players played extremely well for, for the Aggies. Certainly there was a lot of tenacity there for that Bowling Green side, but no doubt about it. Texas A&M, there was not that one player that you said, that's the guy that's turning this game. They did a great job of spreading that ball around and ultimately made Bowling Green pay with what looked to be a very clinical display of, of great sevens. You might be spin the ball wide, spin it back, let the defense open up, and, and run through gaps. 